Hey guys, I'm Mono, and in this video, I'll talk about how to win games, how to read the map, and understanding the flow of a Hella Loose match and of its gameplay, which I think a lot of people struggle with. I see a whole lot of comments of people talking about them getting shot over and over again, which is, you know, the running simulator thing. So, this is the video. I'm gonna talk about how to actually play Hella Loose and win matches. So, I'm gonna use strat sketch a lot in this video. So I'm gonna talk about the sectors and what they mean in terms of a, a match flow and the gameplay flow. I'm gonna talk about some details on the map which are key to understanding how to actually push an objective and gain control of it. And then I'm gonna actually talk about, you know, the position of your team on the map and stuff like that. So let's start off we're talking about the actual flow of the of a gameplay in terms of what a squad leader should be doing. So let's say, set the stage here. We have these sectors uh, for this match. Sorry, that's wrong. It's all of this for that south side and crossroads right there in the middle. Those are the capable areas of the map. So everything else is not going to see a whole lot of action, especially in this layout where everything's south. So this northern side of the map is going to be pretty much, you know, free for you to get a truck and go drive around, maybe get some some garrisons to fall back here to be able to, you know, sustain a, a better presence at the checkpoint and stuff like that, or to actually go like we did here and, you know, get a cheeky attack garrison using a, a truck onto Rue de Gambosville right there. So the sector layout should inform you of the basic flow that's going to go on in the game. All right. This area is going to see a whole lot of action. You know, this side of, of checkpoint, basically this this area, it's going to see a whole lot of people from Rue onto checkpoint and people from checkpoint trying to get on Rue. So this is going to be a major combat area. So if I were playing artillery, this is where I would drop my artillery somewhere around here. The other piece of information, as I mentioned, is, you know, the areas that are not going to be seeing action. Let's take a look at Stalingrad here to get another example in. And here, I don't know what's going on. Here we have Nail Factory, Dolgi Ravine. Uh, actually, Nail Factory, that's wrong. That's going to be Nail Factory, Dolgi Ravine, Carriage Depot, House of the Workers, and L-Shaped House. And what we're going to see in terms of flow for this battle is... We're going to see the enemies doing this. And now that they've kept uh, Carriage Depot, they're going to be doing this, right? And also from HQ. So this north side of the map is going to see a whole lot of, ac uh, of action. These garrisons th that we have at Dolgi Ravine, ideally we should have a garrison here to help us defend against this attack. This garrison that we have north is going to see a whole lot of action and it's not going to be real good for pushing onto Carriage because as we try and do this, we are going to have to fight against reinforcements coming in from House of the Workers and from people going from Carriage onto Dolgi Ravine and from House of the Workers onto Dolgi Ravine. So while having this position right here is good, you know, it's good that we have this, the actual opportunity in terms of capping Carriage Depot and taking it back is going to come from the south. Because we can do this, we can get a truck, put a garrison here, put another Gary here and, you know, get onto Carriage Depot that way because this side is going to have a whole lot less uh, amount of enemy infantry than this side, okay? And as a squad leader, talking about the flow of the game, what you want to do is start, of a, uh, start at a garrison, move using your OP to another location where you're going to set up another garrison, or destroy a garrison from the enemy team. So let's take a look here. So let's say I grab a supply truck and get this garrison down. All right, then I'm gonna move and I'm either gonna, like I'm gonna put the OP somewhere around there and I'm gonna drop a garrison when I get there. And then I'm gonna move again, probably gonna check if they have, you know, an enemy garrison that should be somewhere either here or here. And as I do that, I'm going to go from this garrison that I established. I'm going to use my OP. I'm going to place my OP halfway between my, my garrison and my point of interest, basically. 
So I'm going to use this OP to try and destroy whatever it is that they have here. And if not, uh, like that OP is not going to be possible to put it here. You know, it's too far deep, but let's you get the point. Um, and that's that is the flow of the freaking game, guys. That is the 101 of Hell of Deuce. The second thing that I'm going to take a look at is how the map detail should inform your tactics and that OP and garrison placement in terms of, you know, how to actually re recap that sector. So let's take a look at this map of SME and we're going to look at Western approach. Let's say we need to attack Western approach. Uh, and it is in the hands of the Germans, right? So those are the four capable sectors. And we can push from here. We can push from here. Or, like, these lines represent stuff like hedgerows, roads, trenches. And they should inform what is the best way to attack a position. So from the east, we don't really have more than this and this is like this is stretching it this is not like this is not three avenues of attack this is basically like one and a half because these all end up here in this main crossroads area right so we're eventually gonna all you know reach this point here and from there attack western so we only have like one and a half avenues of attack from the east let's take a look at other avenues of attack these are hedgerows that you can actually use as cover. That's a road that you can use as cover. This is another like hedgerow thing that you can use as cover. From here, we have this, we have this, we have this. And from the north, we have basically that. Because the other one is going to be like uh, coming all the way around here and there. And it's not going to end up being from the north. It's going to be from the west, basically. So I see a whole lot of commanders dropping airheads up here north to attack western from the north which like it doesn't make any sense right because you can see it right here you only have this avenue of attack from the north that offers m some cover from the east you're not much better off you do have way more cover with the buildings and stuff but you don't really have multiple avenues of attack the best way to attack western is from the south because I can put an attack garrison here, and that is going to be super far away from the enemy, so that garrison is not going to get locked. And my team is going to be able to push from multiple angles from the south onto western. And not only that, but take a look at the cap sectors. If we attack from the north, just like at the last second of that north attack, people are in the cap sector right there. From the east... Like, yeah, the people here will be in the cap sector, but, you know, again, the east, like, yes, it's an angle that I, you want to uh, use, but it's not going to be the opportunity angle, if you know what I mean. From the south, everyone attacking here south is inside the capture sector already. So even if they're not killing enemies, even if they're the worst player in the game, and they're just running from this garrison over here and just getting shot there and doing that over and over and over and over again that is going to be better than the best player in the world doing this because for this entire time this player is not actually contributing to actually anything at all anything at all like yes if you get some kills you know you might get like a couple of kills uh, depending on the map layout like there might be infantry there pushing onto hospice or i don't know but this approach from the south has the combination of the two key factors, which are angles of attack, multiple angles of attack, and being inside the cap sector, which is why you want to do this in the first place. Let's take a look at Carentan. So in town center, we have, if these are the sectors of town center, we have from the German side, you can go from here, you can go from here, you can go from here, you can push from there, or from there, or from here, or from here, okay? And from the allied side, you get this road, you get this uh, um, back alley that leads straight into the exact same point, 
you get this back alley that is not not marked on the map that will lead you up there north and that is it so if you are allied attacking town center you either want to do that from the north like establish a garrison somewhere around here and push through these multiple areas of attack or you want to do that from the south and push here here and here at the same time because if you push from the west you are gonna end up with your entire team in this tiny area sorry in this tiny area right here and that is gonna be the worst because if you get RD'd, then your entire team is getting RD'd. Always take a look at the avenues of attack that each point has to understand what is the best possible angle of attack. That does not mean that you should forego the other ones, right? But it does mean that you have a better chance of success at attacking from this side than you do from the west side, all right? So if I'm playing allied, Let's say, you know, the Germans control town center. We have this area of the map. What I'm going to try and do, I'm just going to delete this. Thinking about the flow of the game is I'm going to try and, you know, maybe have a garrison there and there and there, like three garrisons. And I'm going to try and establish another attack garrison north side here and then keep pushing south. So that garrison is going to, you know, be my base of operations. And then I'm going to use my OP as a stepping stone somewhere around there, maybe, or somewhere around here and attack town center. Same goes from the south. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to go down south and I'm going to attack like this. And I'm going to try as I move. I'm going to spawn here. I'm going to drop an OP here. I'm going to use that OP to do a double drop, get a garrison there, attack garrison. Then I'm going to pick up my OP. Can I delete? Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to put it somewhere around here as I try and attack onto town center. This understanding how this flow of moving, placing garrisons and placing OPs onto the point that you want to go and understanding why you want to go from the south and not from the west, for example, is freaking... It, it, this is the key, guys. This is the key of Hell of Deuce right here. Because... 90% of the player base is going to spawn at this garrison and they're going to do this. And they're going to drop their OP somewhere around here to be able to die over and over and over and over and over and over and over again right in this area to the enemy RD, to the enemy tanks, to the enemy MG fire, to everything. There's going to be a whole lot of action going on here. All right. And that is where the team is going to go die at. And while they do that, they are not going to engage with this i sound like a grumpy old man but <laughs> i have way too many hours in this game and i've seen this happen like s basically every single day multiple times um that's what you want to do moving placing garrisons placing ops to be able to put the garrison down or destroy an enemy garrison because as i move from this side i'm gonna try and find if they have a garrison maybe here you know as a as a backup Maybe they have one in town center right there or right around here. Basically, my movement is going to revolve around spawning at garrisons, using OPs as a middle point between either destroying an enemy garrison or placing one of my own. That is the game for me. Now, maybe someone you know has a different idea of how the flow of the game should be, but those are the tools that the game actually gives you. So last quick tip of knowledge is enveloping the enemy team and i can't believe this is the last one because it's the most important one so let's take a look at summary here all right and i'm going to mark in green my areas of influence which are going to be the garrisons all right and where my team is all right that is my area of influence or my area of knowing what the hell is going on the team the enemy team as far as i know they are already here because I have absolutely... I mean, that, that OP is not lighting up, so they might be here because this one is. And as far as I know, this is all under enemy control, right? And we know there's some infantry elements there because there's an infantry mark. And this is about enveloping your enemy. Helladus revolves and gets won by enveloping the enemy team. And I'm going to show you a great example of that in a second and the, like the best case scenario. So 
this garrison's getting light up, lit up, which means that we might lose this, and that might be another bastion for the enemy, and that presents a real bad situation where we are getting enveloped by the enemy team. So in this situation, what I would do real fast is try and... Sorry, why, why did I do that? Is try and get a garrison uh, down south here as fast as possible. So I'm going to... Talking about the flow, I'm going to spawn at this garrison and I'm going to move here. And in the meantime, I'm going to place an OP there because I might run into enemies that are coming in from Rue onto checkpoint through here. So I do want to have my OP to be able to redeploy as fast as possible until we get this garrison done. And then, then we, when we have this garrison, we're going to keep moving onto Rue. And I'm going to use my OP here and maybe try and establish a garrison here or maybe go south and stuff like that. And that is how you control the flow, all right? So best case scenario, here we have Hurtgen. And look at this, all right? I'm going to mark in green my the areas of influence from my team. All right? Look at how solid that is, okay? Because if the team drops, uh, the enemy team drops an airhead here, for example, you know, we can counteract that no problem. We can counteract that, no problem. Zero problem. And what we end up doing is actually... Right? So we managed to cap North Pass because we got a position here. We had the, we got this attack garrison, so let's take a look at this. We got an attack garrison here, so whatever influence the other team had at North Pass gets completely overwhelmed from this recon here, from... The, the team pushing here and from the rest of the team pushing here and that is how you win games that is how you win games we won this game in like i think it was 23 minutes that's how fast we won this because once we capped hill we also got a garrison here and while you know we capped hill uh we got a garrison there and uh part of the team was pushing like this and part of the team was pushing like this and that reduces the enemy uh, and you know gets around them and we also had some elements pushing from here that is how you win games and you do that by doing this as you do the flow and you can see it right here this is perfect that well that that squiggly line is not true right because it's a forest map and you can basically move around anywhere so that's the flow that's the flow right there and we ended up putting another garrison here so from garrison to OP to garrison, from garrison to OP to destroying an enemy garrison on hill. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you find this enlightening, enlightening, useful, whatever. Leave a comment down below if there's any specific topic that you would like to see me cover in, uh, you know, in these videos. And as always, thank you for watching and I hope I go. And as always, thank you for watching and I hope I will catch you in the next one.